here's a look at some of the most hated contestants from MasterChef. And to start things off, here's a contestant whose confidence and bizarre choices turned her into one of the most talked about contestants. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Well, let's rewind to season five and dive into the juicy drama of the very first mystery box challenge. Courtney snagged the win and was given the power to control the first elimination challenge. First elimination test. Welcome to the Master Chef Pantry. She picked meatloaf, but here's where it gets juicy. We'll have to cook tonight. Wow. Now, brace yourselves, because Courtney had an advantage of saving 10 contestants, leaving the rest, including Stephanie, to battle it out. For this challenge, Stephanie seemed quite confident, but the judges had a different vibe. When the judges came snooping, they found her with a blue cheese cream sauce and couscous, which she had put on her lamb meatloaf. What are you doing with that? Putting it on top of my lamb meatloaf. Yep, you heard it right. Blue cheese on lamb meatloaf. Joe immediately responded saying, are you out of mind? Are you out of your mind? I might be, but you know, I'm, I'm trying to win. Stephanie laughed it off saying she's trying to win and you have to be a little out of your mind for that. Joe shot back. Do you want to go home? To that, Stephanie boldly replied. To win this competition and show America what I'm about, which is cooking. She wanted them to taste her food saying she wasn't just a pretty face. She was there to win and show America what she's about, which is cooking. Stephanie went to the judges with her dish, which is lamb meatloaf with couscous, pepper ribbons, and blue cheese sauce. Couscous, pepper ribbons, and a blue cheese cream sauce. Firstly, Ramsey tasted her dish to which he says, oh, blue cheese and couscous, that classic combo, wow. He immediately spat it out. That was a very dry combination with lots of chili flakes, blue cheese, and couscous. On top of that, she has the guts to say that she took a risk, but Ramsey didn't like it. Either way, Ramsey wasn't having it. That's where you should be heading. He was seriously disappointed with her and made sure she understood that she got this one so wrong. Stephanie was feeling terrible as she returned to her counter and she felt like crap. Apparently, no one ever told her that her food wasn't good before. I just want to crawl under the nearest oven. In the end, she found herself in the bottom three. When the judges asked who she thought should go home, she didn't hesitate. Who we're about to send home and why? She thought Whitney was lacking that spark and did not have enough love and passion towards cooking. Courtney. Yes. Tonight. And guess what? Her intuition was spot on. Whitney got the boot and Stephanie lived to cook another day. Your time is done in the MasterChef competition. Yes. Now, moving on. In episode four, MasterChef was serving up drama hotter than your morning coffee. Brace yourself as we dive into the delicious disaster that nearly sent our Miss Perfect Courtney packing. I'm screwed. I just start over. The second mystery box challenge is won by none other than Arhan and saves herself and gets to choose the elimination dish. And guess what? It's donuts! Oh no, Miss Perfect Courtney did something stupid putting her in some serious danger. Courtney, our golden girl, forgot to add eggs to her dough. Just when you think it couldn't get worse, she realizes she's out of guess what? Don't have any yeast. And here's Arhan's reaction after seeing Courtney all miserable over something. All I can really think is, my plan's working. Goodbye, Courtney. Arhan was practically gleeful watching Courtney struggle to get yeast. She wanted Courtney out of the competition. Desperate, Courtney went around begging for yeast, but no one had any. Just when it seemed hopeless, someone came to her rescue with the yeast she needed. In here, do you have any extra yeast? I love you. Yes, it was Francis. Now Courtney was a little relieved. Phew, crisis averted or so she thought. The contestants were ready to present their donuts to judges, but you have to see what happened next. Now have one more huge advantage. Aran gets another advantage of saving one contestant, and she very smartly leaves Courtney to fend for herself. Francis B, you have dodged the biggest bullet in this competition. 
Now, Courtney was first up to present her donuts box. And Aran's reaction? Pure satisfaction. For donuts, then you're kind of stupid and you should go home. Aran had some rage with Courtney as we can see her reaction when Courtney went to judges with her donuts. Courtney stepped up, missing her signature heels, and presented her raspberry frosted and the chai glazed donuts. And you have to see Ramsey's reaction to her donuts. That is seriously salty. Ah. They were extremely salty. Courtney was soon to explain that it was a mistake, not intentional. But here's what Ramsey had to say to her next. It's like you've lost your heels, you've lost your mojo. You've peaked. Courtney tried to defend herself, saying she did hit a large bump. But Ramsey cut her off, saying, Sliding down the aerial faster than you got up there. What a shame. Next up, Graham stepped in, unimpressed with the dough's consistency. The technique is just not what it needs to be. Joe followed, equally disappointed. Courtney, almost in tears, admitted she was rushing to get the second batch of dough. And this left Joe frustrated. For me to love these donuts, it's hard for me to even like them. Courtney could only muster a I'm sorry, chef. Arhan, seizing the moment, threw shade. Perfect streak has been broken because her donuts taste like Courtney's catastrophic blunder landed her squarely in the dreaded bottom three, teetering on the edge of elimination. Right now, this is about making a better life for myself. Despite being in the top three for elimination, just when it seemed like all hope was lost, fate took an unexpected turn. Please put your apron on your bench. The time is done. The judges believed in her potential, and she was saved to cook another day. But here's another contestant who, despite their talent, occasionally made some pretty dumb decisions that ended up costing them dearly. In the electrifying episode five of season five, the heat was on. Leslie and Francis, the stars of the last donut challenge, were chosen as captains for the daunting task of preparing food for wedding guests. Leslie, in a series of dramatic choices, picked his team one by one, including Afran, who visibly did not want to be on his team. Awkward much? On Leslie's team, he does not know how to communicate with people. Right off the bat, the blue team was calm, working in perfect rhythm. Meanwhile, Leslie's team, the red team, was a hot mess from the get-go. No strategy, no plan, just pure chaos. Red team begins prep under Leslie's unconventional leadership. It was clear from the start that Leslie's leadership was, to put it mildly, a disaster. The red team struggled to get on the same page, and the tension was palpable. After having a conversation with Leslie, Ramsey had something to say. Get your together now! But it wasn't enough to stop the meltdown. Leslie and Aran ended up in a heated argument with Leslie screaming his frustrations. The drama hit a fever pitch when the red team decided to overthrow Leslie and appoint someone else as their new captain. Point Francis B, the guy who had a successful team last time around. And Leslie's reaction? Priceless. Decided that I am out of control and I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, talk about Leslie trying to be the team partner. Anyway, Francis took the lead and things started to get better, but not without more drama. I don't wanna see nobody else eat! The team had put themselves on the edge again. How many portions are we short? Two portions were short. Two portions. The red team found themselves two portions short of fish. Now, that's kind of embarrassing. As the challenge came to an end, the blue team emerged victorious, just as you guessed. But wait, there's more. Leslie and Aaron's feud didn't end there. Grow up and, and grow some balls. Everyone else was so fed up with Leslie. Of course I'm condescending because I'm tired of getting beat up by everybody here. As the red team failed in the wedding challenge now, they had consequences for their actions, which put them in the pressure test. Leslie, as the dethroned captain, had to choose three contestants to face the pressure test. Feeling betrayed, Leslie chose Aaron, Christian, and Daniel in what seemed like an act of revenge. But plot twist. It's not your decision. 
<laughs> to that, Leslie's reaction was nothing but pure gold. First they nailed me to a cross on a beach, now they're gonna burn me at a stake. And guess who the judges picked first for the pressure test? Yes, Leslie. For the pressure test they were given to cook the dish that practically defined America, which is steak. Leslie seemed confident while making the steak. What's more, according to the judges, he had all right technique and stuff. But the drama didn't stop there. He was fuming as other contestant received guidance from the safe contestants. They didn't like me from day one because I'm the old guy. Anyway, it was time for Leslie to walk his dish to the judges. Seeing some raw dry herbs on Leslie's dish, Ramsey had some thought. It's on the plate. Just for design, no, no reason. Yet, when it came to the all important taste test, Ramsey was pleasantly surprised. The steak was perfectly cooked with a succulent medium rare that earned a rare nod of approval from the judge. However, Leslie's confidence took a hit when Ramsey moved on to the fries. But unfortunately, your fries are dreadful. Despite this setback, Leslie's dish stood out from the others. His culinary skills were striking and were enough to keep him from elimination. Good job. Please, go join your best friends up there on the balcony. Despite his culinary prowess, Leslie's journey was marred by dumb moves and unnecessary drama. Now, how many chances does one person get before it's just too much? The judges were disappointed with this contestant more times than we can count, and this episode was no exception. So, we've seen him fumble before, but this time he truly outdid himself. Episode 9 kicked off with a bang. The mystery box challenge winner was Christian. The lucky guy got to pick the ingredients for the dreaded elimination round. And what did he choose? None other than Joe's favorite ingredients basket. Talk about upping the stakes. Oh man, that's Joe's. Lots of wine. The basket was a mix of intriguing elements. But here's where it gets spicy. Christian had a massive advantage. And guess who he picked to bear the brunt? One hour to cook their dish. Courtney. Now, the rest of the contestants were left to fend for themselves. Rolling the dough with confidence, Cutter was in his zone. As Ramsey approached him, Cutter was quite confident, and here's what he decided to make in his elimination round. I'm gonna do some little flatbread crisp pizzas. And what was Ramsey's obvious question? Why? Seriously, who the hell would think of making pizza in a neck-to-neck -neck elimination round? Come on, man, you are in the elimination round. You gotta think out of the box. But Cutter, being Cutter, had a plan. For his defense, he was saying he liked the ingredients, and he thought he could come up with a good dish. However, Ramsey's eye widened in disbelief. It's all about what Cutter likes again, not what the judges want to see. Yep. Well, here's our man Cutter making the pizza dough without the yeast. And he confidently said, I got some eggs and some baking powder. Ramsey, trying to mask his disbelief, shot back with a warning. Under 40 minutes to nail it, good luck. Thanks. Anyway, soon it was time Cutter presented his dish. And Ramsey's reaction was priceless. That's it, chef. That's it. Holy mackerel. Christian gave. Is this what you were thinking too? Come on, man. You just can't serve something like that. Ramsey was quite disappointed to say the least. But Cutter was just being Cutter, and Ramsey wasn't having it. A basil, oregano. Hold on it. In fact, Ramsey couldn't hold himself back. My name's Gordon Ramsey, not Stevie Wonder. Ramsey was all over Cutter. Some mini pizzas come out. Maybe describe it again, and I'll try and hear it. Cutter, undeterred, defended his pizza's supposed artisan quality, but Ramsey's patience was wearing thin. And then came Joe. If Ramsey was frustrated, then Joe was livid. He was furious. He grilled Cutter on the ingredients. He fired back with a, do you know where the ground Parmesan cheese comes from? What milk it's made out of? And Cutter, clueless, responded with a no, sir. Joe's patience was clearly gone, but Cutter was fumbling for answers and it only made things worse. 
Do you know what balsamic vinegar is? Now, here's how Joe responded. Why did you put sauce underneath it as well? Apparently, Cutter was just trying to get some color on the plate. Like, stop! Who would put the sauce underneath a pizza? The final blow came swiftly. Joe took a bit and spat it out. A waste of our time and your time in this kitchen. And after all this Cutter with unmatched audacity said, it pissed Joe off, it pissed Gordon off. But I thought it tasted good, and it definitely be a piece of what I would order. Normally, the judges call out the three worst dishes to come down to the front. But this time, they went with two dishes. What's more? The contestants had to take responsibility and own up. But guess who thought they had the best dish? Cutter, of course. But his confidence was misplaced and he found himself once again facing elimination alongside Elise. Elise and Cutter, please make your way down. This was Cutter's fifth time in the bottom, and this is what the judges had to say. It's your stubbornness that's stopping you from taking it to the next stage. Cutter still believed he was better than Elise. And quite shockingly, Cutter was saved from elimination for the sixth time. Elise. Was this guy a favorite? or just incredibly lucky. Who knows? But one thing's for sure, Cutter's journey in MasterChef continued, much to the judges and viewers' disbelief. But here's another contestant who took the risk of landing him and his partner in the dreaded pressure test. And it's not very pretty. Episode seven of season five had contestants facing a daunting task, the infamous surf and turf dish. They had only one hour to set aside their differences and work together to impress the judges. The twist came when Courtney, the last challenge winner, got to decide who would pair up. She strategically put Dan and Cutter together, a duo with clashing opinions. Almost immediately, Dan and Cutter had different opinions of what they should be making. You have two lean proteins going together, that's the only thing. Dan suggested a tuna sashimi, but Cutter, always vocal, argued against it. To what I'm trying to tell him, these proteins don't go together, you need something. Tension mounted in the pantry as their disagreement escalated. They were like oil and water, refusing to mix. They had a heated conversation in the pantry and wouldn't decide what to do. Clearly, they weren't getting along. In other words, Cutter was frustrated. Dan, on the other hand, was in shutdown mode. We're overthinking it. He muttered, lost in his own world, unable to decide on the vegetables. I think that's what he said. That's exactly what he said. He's going into Dan's shutdown mode. Now, all they had were two types of protein that did not go together, and seven items in total in the pantry. Disaster was looming. Two proteins that do not pair together. Now, how would they be making a good dish out of all this and not to go home tonight? When Ramsey approached their station, eyeing the chaos, he was curious to know what they decided to whip up. They hastily described a bizarre concoction. Chilled venison slices with warm tuna chunks, soy sauce drizzled over like sashimi. And Ramsey's eyebrows shot up. The real kicker? Cutter and Dan were not on the same page. Dan goes off on a wild tangent in the pantry, and by the time we got out of there, we ran out of time. Seemed like Cutter got the worst partner for this challenge. And what was Ramsey's advice? And I'm like, let's not worry about it. Let's just put something on a plate. Come on, Dan. It's a challenge that can put you and your partner in the pressure test, not a picnic. Anyway, the moment of truth arrived and they presented their dish to the judges. To keep things short, the plate was an embarrassment, empty and unappealing. And Ramsey's reaction was explosive. Is that? Cutter was not having it either. He was furious at Dan. He just starts grabbing and this is what you get, ran out of time in the pantry. Dan tried to defend himself, but Cutter wasn't having it. We didn't get enough ingredients to really make anything. To make things worse, when they described the dish, it was a mess. It was seared venison loin on a bed of cauliflower and parsnips. On the other side was seared tuna marinated in some ponzu yuzu soy on a three radish salad. Ramsey shook his head. Even the separate identities didn't work. Clearly, it was one of the worst dishes of the competition so far. Cutter was so embarrassed that it was like you don't even have to taste the dish. 
But that's when Joe decided to put him in his place. So why don't you let me figure out what I have to do and what I don't have to do. Joe's reaction to that dish was something. It was so brutal, the room went silent. So what was the aftermath? Dan, trying to stay calm, said, if I'm going to blame anyone, it's myself. But he couldn't help calling Cutter's actions cowardly. Cutter was really angry, knowing this disaster put them in the pressure test. His chances of going home were now very high. Next up, Francis, Elise. And just like you expected, they were in the bottom three teams facing elimination. And what was the lesson? In a team challenge, it's always better to put your heads together and plate one dish. Moving on, here comes a contestant who is unanimously hated by many viewers. Speaking of culinary disasters, Jeff from season eight really took the cake. In short, Jeff was a real hot mess. He had a terrible temper, was always getting into arguments, and never ran out of excuses for his constant blunders. It's safe to say that he thrived on negativity, bringing everyone down with his bad vibes. At the beginning, he started off strong and determined, ready to tackle each challenge head on. But then, out of nowhere, he took a massive nosedive into a pit of mediocrity. And when things didn't go his way, watch out, he would flip out and have violent outbursts that could catch anyone off guard. Under pressure, total meltdown. And as a team player, forget it. Jeff was the sorest loser you could ever imagine. Now, let me walk you through what happened during the mystery box challenge with a family reunion theme. Jeff had to create a savory dish inspired by his loved ones. Santa Claus. What? When he saw his fiance and son, he decided to make a soy glazed salmon with fancy accompaniments like miso, ginger, garlic cauliflower puree, and pickled radishes with Asian pears. But unfortunately, his dish didn't impress the judges enough to be considered a top entry. Then came the twist. The remaining contestants had to cook another salmon dish, but Kate, who had won the previous mystery box, got to assign different time limits to everyone else. 50 minutes, you'll shout out another name. <sighs> Jeff got the shortest time limit of just 20 minutes, and he hurriedly rushed to the pantry to get things going. Certainly, I am one of the top chefs here. Little did he know, Kate actually wanted Jeff gone because of his poor attitude. His attitude is poor, so I want to send him home. So, despite his initial promise, Jeff's journey was marred by his temper, excuses, and constant underperformance, culminating in a less than stellar finish. But Jeff, bless his heart, was completely delusional. We have a little bit of feta cheese and sundry tomato relish. He genuinely believed that he was given the tightest time limit because he was considered the strongest cook in the competition. Can you believe that? It's a major misunderstanding of epic proportions. Anyway, the moment of truth finally arrived, and it was time for the judges to taste Jeff's dish. And at the end of the day, I don't think anyone else could have done better. He proudly presented his Mediterranean-style salmon with feta cheese and sun-dried tomato relish, served over an apple and cucumber gratin with a cranberry and stout beer sauce. Jeff was beaming with confidence, thinking he had nailed it. But oh boy, was he in for a rude awakening. Oh. Jeff was convinced that his dish was the best, but Ramsey was far from impressed. In fact, Ramsey was furious when he discovered that the salmon was raw. He accused Jeff of trying to poison him, which is a pretty serious allegation. Jeff tried to defend himself, claiming that he intentionally wanted the salmon to be rare. You say you wanted it that rare? Yes. But Chef Ramsey was having none of it. He berated Jeff for not understanding the difference between rare and raw, which is a pretty basic culinary concept. And if that wasn't enough, Ramsey also found the combination of the salmon and the gratin to be utterly bizarre. It's like sushi though. He even compared the salmon to sushi, which was not a compliment. Ouch, that's gotta hurt. 
As the judges deliberated, Dino cracked a joke about making sushi, which clearly rubbed Jeff the wrong way. Were we allowed to make sushi? No, I couldn't be wrong. And then Jeff fired back with a scathing retort that left everyone stunned. I like a spaghetti and meatball. The tension escalated rapidly, and before long, a full-blown brawl erupted. <laughs> In the end, Jeff found himself standing alongside Yachishia, awaiting the judge's verdict. He didn't care. But in a shocking twist, Ramsey eliminated both contestants. Jeff. According to Ramsey, Jeff's defensive attitude and refusal to learn from criticism sealed his fate. When asked about his feelings after the elimination, Jeff surprisingly shared some positive thoughts. I'd also like to take the opportunity to thank the three of you, so thank you. He also acknowledged that his attitude might have rubbed some contestants the wrong way, but he insisted he did his best. Ordered my team, oh, and I did the best that I could. All in all, Jeff's behavior was a recipe for disaster. A toxic mix of a short temper, childish antics, and a refusal to acknowledge his own flaws. It's no wonder his time in the competition ended in a spectacular crash and burn. Most people think that this was the final straw for Jeff. It must have really shaken his self-esteem and pushed him to quit. What do you think? I personally believe he could have exited with a bit more grace. All right, up next is Nathan. It was the fourth episode of season seven. 18 home cooks scrambled around like crazy to dodge getting reprimanded by Gordon Ramsay in front of everyone. Now, the top 18 contestants will be catering a wedding for MasterChef Season 6 alum Nick Nappy. Really good news, when's the wedding? Well, um... He and his fiance appear blissfully happy and smitten. Are you all ready to face your next challenge? But who really cares? Like most weddings, we're just here for the food, right? But you won't believe the craziness that was about to unfold. So, what happened is, following their last week's win, Nathan and Terry were appointed team captains for this challenge. However, Ramsey threw in a tricky twist by announcing they wouldn't be selecting their own teams. Instead, the rest of the chefs were asked to choose a side and reveal their preference between the two captains. Oh my gosh, this is just like getting picked for dodgeball in middle school. Ramsey intervened and instructed Terry to transfer three cooks to Nathan's team to balance things out. Terry, next. Unfortunately, I'm going to send Sean over to the other show. With the teams now balanced, Terry's red team and Nathan's blue team could finally start cooking. They had two courses to prepare, 150 guests to satisfy, and very little time to accomplish it all. Oh, and to add to the pressure, Ramsey dropped the bombshell saying, First time in MasterChef history, there'll be no pressure test. The stakes were raised, folks. The stakes were raised. The bride and groom requested a scallop appetizer, and so a scallop appetizer they shall receive. Right from the start, the contrasting leadership styles between Terry and Nathan became apparent. If we work together as a team, we can create something amazing. Meanwhile, Nathan was mostly just shouting at people to quiet down. Stop. Nathan, don't yell at Well, obviously, the blue team faced a rocky start in the appetizer round. I need that sauce. I'm straining it right now. Since scallops are delicate and require precise timing, Ramsey was concerned when he saw Barbara already searing the scallops before the ceremony had even begun. You can't cook them now. Nick's not even married yet. As Nathan spiraled into chaos, Sean tried to seize control of the situation. Everybody just relax, and we're going to win this damn competition. In other words, there was a power struggle. Trust me. Yes, chef. Trust me. He's trying to talk to me. You can't talk to me. But the blue team continued to face other issues, too. They struggled to plate quickly, Barbara's vinaigrette turned out awful, and some scallops were still undercooked. Just your typical team meltdown scenario. Look at the dining room out there. You're not f Nelson, there's nothing coming out. Yeah, so on to the main course. Meanwhile, the red team sailed through service smoothly. They encountered a minor hiccup when strong winds knocked over some plates ready to be served. We're not gonna be able to get these plates out on time. But they quickly recovered. Terry had everything firmly under control. 
The guests seemed pretty impressed with the red team's dishes as well. Their scallops were cooked to perfection, and the sauce received rave reviews. The sauce here on the red was super elegant. Yeah. Unfortunately, the blue team still couldn't solve their squabble. Nathan, out calm the down. And this is when Ramsey tried injecting some order. You are expediting. Yes, chef. This is your team. But wait till you see how that went down. Seriously? Oh my gosh. Who made that vinaigrette? It was bad. So bad that Ramsey said, It looks like something out of a sewer. Not surprising that they failed to get all their dishes out on time. Chef, I have a question. I know I have a question right now. And the ones that did make it were criticized for being bland. Like he said, it could use definitely more seasoning, a little bland. I mean, the blue team seriously needed to pull themselves together before the next course if they wanted to stand any chance of winning. They're not working together, Gordon. He's putting out a raw scallop. Credit to Nathan, he took Ramsey's highly constructive criticism on board and had a heart to heart with his teammates. I got to be a better team captain. I got to step it up. I do not want to let them down. I mean, he even shared a hug with Sean. It finally looked like everything was going to be just fine. Surprisingly, it's not the lamb that gave the blue team trouble. It was there or so. Now, DeAndre was in charge of this dish, claiming to be an orzo expert. Job is perfect for me. We got this. But unfortunately, he seemed to only excel at burning the bottom of the pan. Oh my god, it burns. Oh my gosh. Round one, Nathan would have had a complete meltdown over this. But round two, Nathan was much more zen. I'm just going to breathe and work through this. His team rallied together to salvage what they could of the Orso. Do you want to start over? No, we don't have time. On the other hand, the red team encountered major issues with their pro team. I can't relax, I gotta go. Relax. When Ramsey checked in for service, he noticed pieces of raw meat. Just touch that, just touch it. It's too cold, hang it. It's raw. He calmly peers pointed out their mistake and instructed them to rectify the issue before serving any food to the guests, or else, as he put it, I swear to God, I'm gonna cancel the whole thing. The threat served its purpose, though, and the red team managed to bring their rack of lamb up to the required standard. Conversely, the red team's feedback was the complete opposite. The lamb fell short, but the other components of the dish stood out. Having crust envy yes, from the blue team's lamb. But guess what? As always, the results were declared with a surprising twist. So, will the bride throw the blue or red bouquet? <laughs> yes, the first team challenge of the season went to Terry and the red team, which meant someone from Nathan's team was facing elimination. But Ramsey and Christina had some other plans. Sean, team would have been lost without you. Thank you, chefs. Surprisingly, team captain Nathan was spared too. With your tenacity, you are safe from elimination. Well, I think many of their issues stemmed from Nathan's oversight. Do you agree? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on the post notifications. And if you want to watch another mind-bending video, then make sure to check out this next post right here. It's even crazier.